go seven, go seven, go seven, go seven, go seven, go seven, go seven. Go seven, king of the game. I believe in you, that's what he'll say. Nice and kind, leading cobalt ice. He's a blue, cute, and deadly little guy. Seeing through the fog, old gods he is slain. Go seven, go seven, go seven, go seven. Go seven, go seven, go seven, go seven. Go seven, king of the game. I believe in you, that's what he'll say. Nice and kind, leading cobalt ice. He's a blue, cute, and deadly little guy. Seeing through the fog, old gods he is slain. Go seven, go seven, go seven, go seven. Go seven, go seven, go seven, go seven. Go seven, king of the game. I believe in you, that's what it'll be. Oh, oh, hey, there we are. <laughs> Took a while for the penguin to show up there. It's not the game we're looking at. There we go. Okay. We'll see. We'll see. We might not start here. It depends on if Sneaky Dragon is ready. That's what they'll say. I thought you might be making two of Fluffy. You started typing before I did. I think you just weren't as prepared because the start time wasn't uh, wasn't preset like before. I had the advantage there. I did cut off the intro song because I'm running late. I know usually I let it it get to the end of each cycle. I mean I could go back, but I don't think it's quite worth it. I am. Oh, what's up, every birdie? Go seven here, king of the penguins, and we're back with another great advance. Where's my web stream? So waddle on over here and enjoy the high quality gameplay. And remember to like, sub, and shop at the penguin store. There's a. Uh... There's no penguin store. Maybe far in the future. I did sign up for the new Smacky Cup. I know I'm going to regret it. Because even in these global league games I'm playing. When I'm just playing on my phone. But I, I, have, I even then have trouble finding time to play them. Starts in three days. Congratulations, congratulations. Let me check in with Sneaky. Blue, ready. If not, then the, the title of the video will be a lie and I'll just delay this. They're doing, doing an on-site replay. Force the Sneaky Dragon specifically so we'll see the timer. Because the Sneaky Dragon said... Um, it was very pertinent to the gameplay. The Sneaky Dragon is currently above me just because it's on-site rather than just all of them. Uh, is El... Is... I get to it even playing. I, a rip is above me though. I think rip is currently seed one. I mean, we can check. Elega two is queued up. And Elega two would be number one. Ooh. But rip was just the first. Rip was just the first one to sign up. I think even Poland's above me. I'm gonna be like a low seed. Well, not low. Low, a low high seed. Ooh, Rhizomatic, look at you! Broke the 1600 barrier. 
Uh, I'm not seeing it like a two. I might. I could control F to find them. Was going down this time. <laughs> you might be up against someone else other than me. I think I might have to control F to find it. This is a long list. I thought it would be sorted by yellow, but it's sorted by sign up. Ella. There he is. 74. There you go. There, that would be seed one. Then, yeah. I'm fifth. That's not bad. That's not bad. Not a problem. I don't know if the sneaky dragon's ready. It seated you at your peak. I thought it seeded you at your current. Does it seed you at your peak? Hiya. Oh my gosh. Hello, a chest. $16. Money amount to match my high fund rank because money amount to match your ELO would break you. <laughs> For those that don't know, which is going to be mostly everyone, but chest and I have been having a little competition here in the high funds. And as you can see, uh, I am one rank above a chest in high funds currently. A little more than a point ahead in rating. I'm kind of bouncing back and forth there. I mean, I wouldn't turn down $1 for every, for my ELO. It's not like it's in the 1700s. Not like Lord Clefairy. Oh my gosh. Lord Clef Clefairy is popping off. I remember when I played against Lord Clefairy on my um on my 25 games all live alt. They've come far. They've Look at that, rank three in the in standard and then overall. Is a fat bird ahead in the way? You can't see it? I'm so sorry. Well, I can I can turn off the bird head for a second. Hopefully that won't. There you go. 16, 17, one point off. Please, bird head return to okay, good. Seeds you based on your max overall rating. Okay. I guess that's so people can't tank their rating to go to a lower bracket or something. Okay. Last call for the sneaky dragon. What do you guys think? Should I should I do the Sneaky Dragons replay even though the Sneaky Dragon's not here? Or should I go through my replays and give the Sneaky Dragon time to show up? In the practice game. Hello, Shoop. Happy Friday or Fry Yay or or Weekend Eve. How do I know they're not here? They are a sneaky dragon. That's true. But I did ask them on Discord. And that while they're sneaky, they're honest. Go seven replays. Okay. We'll do go seven replays and then come back. Once we hear back from the sneaky dragon. Going to do my replay. Give time to arrive. Yeah, exactly. It's too long of a name, Elegatua. I don't know if you've ever played Wargroove, but the Sneaky Dragon is a Wargroove player. 
pretty good. They're pretty good. Okay, we're going to very quickly... Oh, I still have this transition scene. We're going to transition between here. Be right back. I mean, I can... Oh, look at that. It says be right back and everything. I have to move a whole bunch of screens. This is why I should have a third monitor <laughs> instead of just two. Maybe one day I'll admit I'll upgrade my setup. Maybe one day. All right. And we back. Five is gonna be a mess. You have played Wargroove actually, but just a single player content? Yeah, I played in a Wargroove tournament, having never played the game, and I got all the way to the grand finals. But uh that's how well the Advanced Wars skills transition. But man, it was a live tournament, and I was timing out left and right <laughs> in the in the second one I played in. Do you and the misses call your home the igloo? <laughs> no. Just casually flexing. I know, I know. I would say it's a pretty fun game, but it has it, it definitely has some flaws in its multiplayer. Have you played Wargroove 2 is the question, though. Wargroove 1 did have a co-op, which I think is pretty cool. Which one am I doing first? We are going to do... Javier game first. I guess I can let you guys choose again. Do you want the Javier game first, or do you want the Hachi game first? Ooh! Yeah, I, I, I like... I think Wargroove 2 has a better campaign experience, because the missions aren't quite so long. Javier, Javier, Hachi. Map name Kindle is fair and balanced. Both play Hachi refuses to explain. Leaves. <laughs> yeah, I would recommend it. Yeah, in in, in Wargroove 1, the last... It's got really some really long missions. Wargroove 2 seemed to be much more compact. I just wish it's roguelite um, game mode was a little better. That's okay. okay, I got two Javier's, so we'll do that one. Okay. Here we go. This is high funds. Let's move the map over a tiny bit. This is high funds. This is the new mode I'm trying to get better at. Um, I played in a high, I've played in a couple high funds tournaments, I guess. But I played in one Discord high funds tournament where I played against a true boss, the number one high funds player, and I beat him. And honestly, I feel like I. I got away with murder there, so I decided to go back into high funds to, to let him get his revenge, and I have been queued up against him on a typical high funds map that are all incredibly difficult to read, so I have a feeling I'm just going to uh, die a horrible death, but it was all worth it. And uh, this is just one of the league games I played on my way up to it. And this, as far as a high funds map, this is Titan's Rise, Arise, or something like that. And uh, as far as readability, I would say this is one of the easier maps to read. 
There's some pretty clear contested properties to be fighting over, like these doubled cities. There's only like one lab per player that you have to be defending. You've got clear two base for uh, one base airport. You've kind of got this weird like lander anti-air pipe seam thing going on into the middle. But for the most part, this is a, almost you know, like a traditional map. <laughs> what map did I go against? A true boss? Oh, we'll check really quick. I don't know how many true boss replays I have. It was forecast of victory. My Sammy against a true boss is Andy. Yeah, back to this game. But uh, Pogi Bear took the penguins from me i tried to request that i get the penguins and it was just ignored and then pogi bear went on to the game starting and whenever someone takes the penguins from me i always pick brown desert because brown desert is the special ops uh, contingent of the penguin nation and if someone's playing cobalt ice against me they're clearly insurgents and my special ops are going to get brought out to deal with these traitors. So uh, I won't be changing the brown desert because it's 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 important. <laughs> and I always I always try and play uh, to go straight for the throat against a traitorous penguin player. It's a <laughs> it's a false flag operation. Well, because Antarctica is the world's largest desert, so all other deserts are just penguins, penguin expansionists and special ops exploring them and the like. So, Brown Desert is canonically penguins. Um, if you remove that bandana, it's just a penguin underneath. As everyone knows. Uh, but no, Pokey Bear is, is a nice guy uh, and a fan, so no worries. No hard feelings, except extremely hard ones for stealing my penguins. Okay, anyway, we'll go on. <laughs> my idea here is I'm going to try and beat Kindle to, uh, to the cities. I'll try to lock these ones down with artillery because I'm Javier, so I can use artillery while my opponent can, but can't use it as well so i'm going to try and stop kindle from dominating these two cities using artillery over here and stop her from dominating them over here by just having two bases against one so kind of rush these ones down to to stop the the kindle because kindle's really really good at fighting over these kind of properties where you have a property next to a property just because of kindle's day-to-day -day giving plus 40 percent attack and then her her uh, normal power doing three damage to everything on on property so she can like hit your units that are standing on there clear your unit off and then get tons of really good damage um either onto the other city and then clear that unit and then strike again on another unit and kind of win these properties that's, that's if you ever play against kindle kindle just know you don't want to get involved in a fair fight around double the paired, paired cities like this. So I'm going to try and avoid that as best I can by making it unfair fights, either by using artillery over here or uh, just way outnumbering Kindle on this side. In other words, Kindle is evil. So you're going to see some very uh, aggressive play from me in order to avoid that kind of situation because this is traditionally where the fighting is going to happen as both double bases and this base kind of feed into this area. There can be fighting into the center, especially if these pipes seem to get broken, and then the, both the airport feeds directly into this area, and you can use the lander to pick up uh, purchases from this base and drop off right here, assuming the anti-air is gone and the pipe seems open. Unfortunately, you can't do it on this side because there isn't a shoal here, so it's only a one-side operation for this lander, which is a little bit awkward. 
that's okay. Ideally, my dream is I get my comm tower. I stop Kindle from being able to fight on the double cities, so we get more fighting on these more open terrains, and I just have a huge advantage in stat wise because I'm Javier and Kindle's not getting to fight very much off the cities. And then off of that, I'm able to either get this lab or I get all of the central captures once I've uh, kind of like won this more no man's land area. Uh, it's going to prove very difficult to get the lab capture because there's this city here and this city here, which are both opportunities for Kindle to attack blockers <laughs> from a property. So that part is going to tr prove to be much more difficult than I thought, but that's okay. Uh, it's very important here. You'll see that there's an option for me and my opponent with this infantry on this mountain. You could either go and capture this base first, or you can capture this base first. It is a million times better to capture this base first than this base, because when you finish from here, you can step onto the mountain and then go straight over to this base. If you finish here first, you have to take two turn to, or one extra turn to make it over to this base. It's so you uh, the cost for going over here is delaying your other base from going up by an entire turn, and the advantage is like zero. <laughs> like I guess you can go for a back cap sooner. You can go for the central caps sooner, but the central caps already have two bases covering them, so it's pretty difficult for your opponent to really stop you from getting these, so it's no real reason to rush these. Where this base has a lot of very important uh, captures that are easily contested by, well, not this one, but like these ones and this one, this one. I mean, this one can also go there, but they can both go for this one, so there's no advantage to going for this base over this base uh, for going for the doubles, the double bases down here. Anyway, that's just something to keep in mind, is you always want to go for this, the base only one square with the mountain because then it takes one less turn to get your other base online. I mean, there might be a situation where you can go, you can uh, do something else, but yeah, and the black boat, the black boat's here. Uh, oftentimes this will happen in high funds. The black boat is here to stop someone from rushing a vehicle to come over and interrupt your, your base capture. Which isn't true for this base, so it could even it could be even worse. You could go for this capture, it takes you an extra turn to make it to this base, and you don't have any like black boat defending the capture, so they could come over and interrupt you and you'd just be so sad. So another reason to uh to go for that capture instead. Here. I I think I kind of regret this choice. Maybe. I'm going to go for the central captures really quickly from this, this one base. Potentially I could run up here. It's not really that much of a threat. Um, I could have gone straight forward to start the captures over here, but I don't really like the fact that Kindle can just kind of move in range to attack me from a property no matter what. But I think it might have been worthwhile to to do so anyway. Because if like Kindle moves here, then capturing on this city is pretty nice. And you can see how low econ this is getting as, as we're kind of rushing towards these these double these paired cities. And I went for a tank first on my double base side to try and limit the number of infantry that Kindle can get out, out of this one base. Uh, but Puggy Bear just decides to, to mirror me there. I'm going to go for an artillery. Um, I also am not a huge fan of my infantry choice here, or infantry movement choice here. It's, uh, the idea is like, I'll let you hit me if you want to, and then I'll just run back to my city and you'll, your capture will be delayed and my artillery can move on to this lab and for kind of like forever lock these. But I could have just, like, I'm, I'm basically going to always go for the interrupt here and if what was I going to say if Kindle 
doesn't force me to attack with this infantry. I'd like to have the option for it to block this forest for my artillery. For, so when the tank comes down, because one, two, three, four, five, six, smack my artillery can threaten that as, uh, as Kindle goes for a capture. Which is definitely annoying, one could say. Does the black boat come into play? Yeah, I use the black boat. Some of your little galaxies soldiers are penguins too. Maybe, maybe. You never know who could be a penguin. Will we hear from Pogi Bear? Maybe, I don't know. Oh, oh, you think like I, I like No, Pogi Bear is doing okay. I'm not super pleased about how I went about this turn here. It's okay. I do move on onto the lab. And I'm gonna block so the tank can't hit my artillery. This just kind of put me in an awkward situation because now you can um, Pogi Bear can do some shenanigans with like having the tank just attack from the road and then continue capturing. That isn't what's gonna ha that isn't going to happen here, but because in high funds cities are worth double income, it can oftentimes be worth it to uh, sacrifice a tank in order to like get a permanent city because it that pays off way faster than it does in other modes that isn't what happens here pokey bear decides to hit this infantry and then kill off this infantry well uh and then just let my artillery get the, the shot off this does make it so i don't have a healthy infantry on this entire front which is pretty uh unpleasant but my goal wasn't really to get, like get all the captures on these fronts is to try and shut down these uh paired cities i also rushed my comm tower a little bit here rather than going for some of these closer cities because i want the extra stats for these this fighting that's begun and yeah before i move my tank onto this missile platform because it it it's like the perfect spot to sit in order to still threaten to hit this uh, city and go for other things too. So my rushing towards this central, these double cities with the tank backup for me has kind of worked out nicely. Kindle backs off. The, the full health tank could have gone down here and killed off my seven health infantry, but then only a five health tank is to hit my artillery on the lab. And when it does that, I'd have double tank to hit it while this artillery could finish off the, um, or hit the, the full health tank. So it just with a really poor trade for Kindle. So Kindle just backs off here. I've, you can see I've, I've lost a lot of progress on these back captures. In here, just because of how far forward I was rushing. And similar to what I was saying that Kindle could have done is like hit my infantry, um, at the cost of allowing free hits on units. I do the same thing over here. It was Kindle's only forward infantry on this front. So I don't really have to deal with captures being threatened if Kindle doesn't have infantry. The same logic that I, I assume Pogi Bear was using against me over here. So I'll just send the recon of infantry in here. Plus I have the comm tower up. So both of these units might get hit, but neither of them are gonna die unless they get double hit. And the second hit's gonna be a lot of overkill. So. It's uh, it's like I either trade a recon for an infantry, which is a pretty good trade in high funds, or I trade an infantry for an infantry, which is uh, a pretty good trade when you're doing double base for single base. Kindle could try and build a, a, a copter to like sacrifice into the anti-air to get charge. That would be a play. I would have to... It, it could be worth it if I... Um, didn't play around Kindle's power at all. I'm 
pretty experienced with fighting Kindles. So I'm not usually going to set myself up too badly. Here, I keep skipping this city. Um, I probably shouldn't actually skip this city here. I should just go for the capture. This is like slightly, I mean, it, it's just to get both of them sooner so I could then uh, go from this city to potentially take this city is my idea. But if I go for this city first, I'm going to get it locked down before the Kindle normal power comes online. If I do this like city skip thing, it's not unreasonable to think that Kindle might get the normal power and stop both of these cities or like, not stop it, but interrupt it, which would be really annoying. Okay, Kindle starts pressuring me over here, being like, I'm forced to, uh, this is, I think this is a, a turn too soon. Because my artillery is kind of forced to fire on one of these, but ideally Kindle would have other things attacking in the meantime, so that my artillery is super overloaded. As is, it's not too upset about this. I have a recon to attack one of these and I have the artillery to fire on the other. Kindle dove in with these tanks to go after my poor poor innocent recon. But I have copter as backup over here and still double tank. So with plenty of infantry. Okay. So, so I was like, uh, Kindle is probably going to get the normal power this turn. So I don't want to put all of my infantry going for captures in one basket, essentially. Instead, I'll do another double city skip in order to have this infantry uh, prepared to interrupt this capture from the mountain. But I will have these captures go on just in case... Kindle doesn't use the normal power, I still profit either way. Who needs captures? I know. That was my logic. This imagery probably shouldn't stand on this city. I'm not cool. I think I did this so it wouldn't be easy for the anti air to one-shot me, but it does get to one-shot me. Uh if I'm on the, the city because of the urban blight. If I stand in the forest, it can't one-shot. Because I'm Javier. Here comes the urban blight. This was a roll to kill this tank, I think. I don't think I had any chip on that tank. If it didn't die, then uh, Kindle would be really sad here. It's still not an amazing fight for Kindle. Obviously, the artillery being on the lab does let it reach these multiple properties, but also means it takes damage from Urban Blight. So it's, you know, you win some, you lose some. And then the Neo tank gets popped out here with my, my tank pressure. Uh, Pogi Bear right now does have an income lead. So I'm going to make sure that I go for all the attacks that I can that don't require a power so I can build up as much as possible. Ideally, I would like to be able to go have the possibility to do normal power one turn, next turn do a normal power again, and just chill with my plus 30 plus 30 stats. Or have the possibility to go for a super. The super only gets me to plus 40 plus 40 which sometimes is going to matter. Yeah, this this capture unfortunately gets in your, gets uh, denied. My imagery would just kind of die for free, so I would, I'd rather have it around so it be used as a blocker. 
I didn't even I, I didn't even use my uh, normal power there because it wasn't needed. I'm just gonna generate as much charge as I can. Pogi Bear is insisting on getting these captures at the cost of all of the units over here, getting potentially struck at. That's something you're gonna see a lot that I do in this game is. Um, really annoying unit positioning. Like you saw this last turn, I have my copter sit here so the tanks can't come down this way. And that's going to be a very uh, typical act. So like here, the anti-air can reach my copter going this way or this way. But now that the tank sits on this missile platform, now the anti-air can't reach the copter. And here, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. I'm starting to block. Okay, I'll contribute one more. There we go. Okay, now that I've contributed these two units, one, two, three, four, five, six. It, the copter can't reach my copter. It would love to attack me from this city. But no luck. One, two, three, four, five, six, and the neo tank can't reach because the copter is blocking it. So the neo tank can't uh, clear a blocker, so the copter can hit my copter. And they're just, they're guarding each other. So nice. Here I was I was like, eh, it's either I lose. A, uh, a nine health tank or I can lose a seven health tank so I'll just lose the seven health tank especially if it gets hit with a an urban blight I think I made a mistake over here yeah I did so I should have had this one health infantry sacrifice itself into this infantry because I actually failed the roll and this guy lived with three health with the capture with three uh, capture points left so Pogi Bear gets that city despite my best efforts. Get hit by an urban blight. Boop, 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 boop. Get beat up on my poor artillery. I have my power active right now. So this tank has got plus 60% defense about. Um, so it wasn't super profitable for Pogi Bear to attack. into that but well, you can see Poké Bears had a nice income lead for a while here at the cost of quite a bit of quite a few units and that does mean that the, there's been some neo tanks busted out right here I was really thinking about trying to just end the game by going for this uh this lab capture which is part of why I want to have so much charge left over so I could potentially use that to make really strong walls but there wasn't any very effective way that could hold out for long enough this is the only infantry that can go for this capture i can kill off all of these infantry and have some blockers out but uh the combination of uh neo tank already existing and then a copter being on its way with it. like the neo tank plus tank here is enough to drill through anything so that either the tank or the neo tank can get a hit on my infantry on the lab and then once this copter shows up and another neo tank gets built here, I just don't have a way of continuing the the walls. The artillery is just a little bit too too late. I can make it so I'd be able to shoot the tank with my artillery, but because of these double cities here, there's always going to be a, I can stop this city from being stood upon, but I can't stop this city. So anything I block with here has to be able to withstand a Kindle attack from a city. And I can do that with my copter, but I also need my copter to be here, if I remember correctly. I don't know. It was like a, it was a whole thing. I decided eventually that it's just not going to happen and go for my uh, attack on this copter in the free, the free city over here. So Pokey Bear managed to defend against my, my lab attack. Well done, well done. I was very sad that this went to four instead of three. 
Because if it goes down to three, I'll go after it with my copter. I might go after it anyway. I don't remember. No, my copter goes after this tank instead. Yeah. Okay, the artillery here are going to be very happy. Pokey Bear might be a little too aggressive with these infantry because once they're gone, it's going to be pretty much impossible to produce any more on the one base side. So sad that artillery dies. It had two health. Yay, we get to live the Neotech attack because Javier privilege. So I was pretty happy that this uh, anti R came in here because if I was worried it would go back and start repairing, I was like, I don't know how I'm going to chase that down very effectively. But since it comes in, now there's going to be no anti R presence for Pogi Bear on this front. And I can start doing lots of copter blocking shenanigans. To make it so the Neo Tank can't hit anything it wants to hit. And every time I'm going for repairs with units, it's either going to be when Kindle doesn't have a, a normal power that's coming up, or when my unit has two or less health, so that after the repairs it will still have a net gain. Like the urban blight will knock it down to one and then it will repair up to three that kind of thing and i decided to go with the bomber here so that uh i can threaten both i can i have i get multiple choices i can go after neo tanks or i can kill off this anti-air and then open up this central passage for my air units to hit both sides or free my own anti-air to go after any of these opposing copters um, and I make sure to hit this pipe seam here in case I get hit with the urban blight and then my my bomber goes down to nine if you're at nine health your bomber won't one shot pipe seams so I had to do a little bit of chip damage there and I was kind of hoping that pokey bear might just respond with bomber in kind because if I use my normal power Kindle's bomber does not want to fight this anti -air. The anti is just going to hit back a little too well. This thing you're trying to pick up is a tactic. Just damage you and no need to always go for the kill. Yeah. Did he just waiting for Ghost 7 to notice it? You're talking about this one? <laughs> Tank kills one health inventory. Here we can just. I have a huge unit count lead, and I've now I've gotten the income lead because I got to steal this city. But you can you'll see this. You can kind of see the strength already of having unit counts, where you just have a bunch of really weak units to just stand in the way, and they're they've got really fancy expensive units, but they like hit one health inventory for instance. But at this point. Uh, Kindle doesn't have any infantry on this front, so I can kind of just kind of I can I can fall back a lot and have no fear. Tower shield. So we're gonna do some more of those shenanigans I was talking about. I really don't want there to be any anti airs on this front, so that I can always do copter blocks to stop this neo tank from hitting anything that's worthwhile and just kind of abusing. My unit can advantage, so I'm just going to run up and one shot the anti air. And then my copter will just sit here. And then because this is triple forest, the Neo tank can't actually make it to this tile. It can, it can't uh, um, hit my Neo tank this way because I have the four health and the two health tank here. So the Neo tank. Could break this and then this tank could come in and kill my two health, but that's not super great. So the best option this Neo tank has, which isn't a great option, is to step down here, hit my nine health tank while my Neo tank's right here. 
and uh, my bomber's on its way. So I'm gonna fly back with my copter here to repair it because I don't currently have an anti-air on this front. My copter is my anti-air. And if I go back here, because I was at 7 health, if I go back and get repaired and then repair at the start of next turn, I can go all the way back up to 9 health. And that's pretty decent for being able to defend these units against the opposing copters or going after tanks and the like. It will also get an anti-air. Because one copter is not going to be great against multiple. I did think about going straight for a fighter here. But I figured at this point I have enough air dominance and I'll only go for a fighter if my opponent goes for a fighter or they go for a bomber. It's, what I can do is have my bomber break this pipe seam, build a fighter, have my bomber break this pipe seam, and then move my fighter out so that I'd be threatening this airport immediately with a, a lock. And that would force my opponent to have to build um, maybe like a missile. I guess an anti-air can also defend. My point does go in here into the artillery range. It is a neo tank on the city, so it won't take too much. But it's not something it really wants to do. Feels like the lander only exists for magnets. It's it's living the dream that for some reason you want to pick up vehicles and drop them off over here. The center doesn't really get this much that much action. It's penguin time. Okay. Thunk. Break the pipe seam. Thunk. No anti airs allowed. And we'll just stand here. This is being, again, very annoying. Once I kill this, this uh, battle copter, now this neo tank is the only unit that can that can hit this tank so it's forced to just hit a five health tank i would i could have used the two health tank here but i was a little bit suspicious that this might be a very low two health tank i don't think i went back and did all the research i should have um and i was worried that this infantry would just kill my two health tank and then this neo tank would be able to hit my neo tank and i was going to be sad uh, as is if Pogi Bear wants to hit this tank, this black boat will have to be deleted. And again, we're just going to do a little copter block here. So this Neo tank gets very sad. Utilizing those same triple forests. And we'll go pick on this Neo tank since it dared to move into my artillery range. Uh, I'm not 100% sold on the infantry movement here. It's 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 me trying to make sure that this neo tank uh, doesn't get away, or like if it gets away, it doesn't get away very well. But I don't think it's even worth it. I think just continuing to retreat over here because Pogi Bear doesn't have any infantry over on this front. There's no real reason to go for these fights. Yeah, two tanks to kill an infantry. Neo tank moves to there. Copter goes for a strike there. Kills off my copter, but that's in my anti air's range. The anti air placement here I was a little bit sketchy on, but I figured I'd always have a path this way. I could have had it one more tile up. That way we'd always have this forest path, which was guaranteed to hit the copter. Um, but if I was there, there was a potential breakthrough that Pogi Bear could go go for and then hit the anti air. So I was like, eh, I'll just not and sit back here uh, and just trust that this, this infantry and artillery will survive to maintain this path. Black Bug is deleted. Neo Tank goes for a smack. This Neo Tank just kind of does a little shift. Okay. So Pogi Bear tries to do something similar to what I've been doing with the uh, put an infantry right in front of the unit like I can't hit this neo tank because the neo tank uh, this infantry is in the way. It's not going to quite work because I have a lot of options for how to break through here. I also have the the, the choice as to whether or not I want to have my neo tank plus copters bug this other neo tank. 
But I ultimately decide that's not something I have to do because I just bring the bomber on over here. I could have had the bomber go up here and break this pipe seam, but I figure it's not really needed. This anti-air can always be freed later. And I would rather deal with the units over here very uh, convincingly. Here, I'm just trying to be annoying. Again, this is another opportunity. Or, I mean, Pokey Bear can kill off an infantry and then hit my copter, but it does take two vehicle hits. It's just a big investment uh, for the standing army over here. Again, two health tank is going to stand here. The Neo tank can come over and hit it. They won't be able to hit my Neo tank. It can come over here onto this city and smack this full health tank, which is, a, you know, a decent target, but that still happens within bomber range. Plus my other Neo tank range. It's not something you necessarily want to do. We got the fighter to match the fighter. And you can see I just have a really nice unit count lead that allows me to go for these really pesky moves. Urban Blight. Oh. Neo tank backs up over here. So yeah, there's been triple neo tanks built on this two base side, and they've kind of just been losing effect uh, efficiency wise to this one neo tank and a bunch of low health units being his blockers, and now a bomber that well that makes it very sad. Infantry kills Neo Tank. Woo! We'll just do some more pesky blocking. The fighter would really love to hit my bomber. I can just put the copter here. There's no anti air available to, to kill it. So if this fighter hits this copter, it is a 9 health copter. I mean, that would be something at least. But there's an anti air and my own fighter, and this bomber can always free this anti air to come over and, and cover this too. One, two, three, four, five, six. So I've got tons of options uh, available to me in order to deal with it. At this point, the, the game is uh, pretty much super over. Pogi Bear is going to go with the double missile. And we're just, at this point, we're just doing some uh, messages back and forth. I'll just kill out that missile. No mercy. Bring in there. At this point, it's all just chatting. And there's GG. How long does it take me to find those blocking tactics? It takes no time at all. I mean, I've done a lot of blocking tactics. So it's something you just constantly look for. When, if, if you play some Elise maps, you will learn your blocking tactics because there's a lot of bases on those maps that have very heavy terrain, kind of like this. You saw how the terrain here was really allowing me to go for those blocking techniques or tactics uh, to shut down the base. Like it builds a Neo tank. You're like, oh no, it's a Neo tank. Oh, I just put a copter in front. Oh, I just put a two health tank in front and uh, it can't do anything. And that's really enabled mostly by this terrain. If these were planes, I can't do that so easily because the Neo tank just walks around the blocking unit. It was lost before it began. Yes, yeah, so you don't always have to go for kills, especially in standard and high funds. Injuring units is uh, much more typical than in Fog. In Fog, you tend to want to kill units off because they have an easier time retreating to survive. They're still useful for vision. They can block in forests and stuff. Unless you're Sturm, I guess. Yeah, you could do that. You could capture either base.
Yeah, you can also use the move player to find the blocks. Okay. Quickly check to see if Sneaky Dragon has replied. Sneaky Dragon's still not here. Well, we have another Go7 game. A very serious one. This is a Z game. On the map, Kindle is fair and balanced. Fair and balanced. Now, I'm going to make a mistake on this. A very embarrassing mistake in this game. My opponent does not punish me for it, so. It's all good. It's Hachi. Yeah, Kindle is fair and balanced is the map. I have not checked who's the 20th entry yet. Is there not any backstory to this game? Uh... I think I saw someone on Discord complaining about something. I don't think they were complaining. I think they were talking about how they don't get to play the tier zeros. And I, I was like, you can play the tier zeros in Z games. And then I just joined a bunch of Z games. Rip joined one of them in Fog. And then I quickly realized that my Fog game on the phone is not a fun experience. So I'm, I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to work around that. On my old phone, I had a very fancy stylus that had a magnetic tip that would track and be able to do basically everything that a mouse could do. It was very handy. Like, it can hover over things and the like. Uh, on my current phone, I can't do that. And it makes the experience on the phone just so much worse. But that's okay. Some fun facts for the Hachi games. For everyone out there who's played Hachi, there's not too many. The the pro strat for Hachi as is as you get closer to uh, your super, you stop spending your money. Like you, you you just like only build infantry or you don't even build anything at all. Because on your super turn, you will be able to spend all of that money at twice its regular value, and you can have some very big swing turns. And then once you start getting, once you get your first super, you get a, you'll have a ton of units, and on your super turn, they're worth half value. Can't you tap the unit once, then tap again, behold. You can do stuff like that, but I've done I've done some accidental attacks on my phone. And also the phone's much worse for going for the phone. It's okay. Um, but yeah, once you get your first Hachi super, for one, the the units that are built and when your super is active, they are half price for when your opponent attacks them and gains charge from dealing damage to you. They get less charge because your units cost less. And then uh, <laughs> um, they, uh, they'll go back to their regular price on your next turn. And they'll fight and they'll give you charge. And you can start saving up money sooner and get uh, even more, either, either more or even stronger units on your next Hachi Super. And you just kind of snowball yourself even when you're losing fights. which makes Hachi really, really good, especially if there's a lot of cities. If you don't know, Hachi's day-to-day -day is that his units cost 10% less to build, which is pretty good, which is pretty good. Uh, and his normal power, which is called barter, I think, uh, costs three bars, and it, means, it makes it so your units cost 50% less to build, so 40% less 
than your uh, your day to day, which is decent. Sometimes you'll see people do it if they're really desperate or they don't have very many cities. Guess is super, which is merchant union, I think. Does the same thing as barter, where all of your units cost 50% cost, and all cities can build like they are factories. <laughs> Which means that in the worst case scenario, you are a really bad sensei. <laughs> You're a sensei that can, you know, you, you build your infantry on all of your cities. They don't move immediately, but they've got full health. Like they cost 500 each. In uh, your more usual case, you're a sensei that drops tanks everywhere or artillery everywhere or anti airs everywhere. You completely break the unit count limitations of that other people are bottlenecked by. And you also break reinforcement lines. And all of those units will feed you into your next super. Eventually, as Hachi, you don't need bases anymore. Even if your opponent takes all of your bases, provided you have the income needed, you're fine. Like, all cities are my bases. I don't care. Yeah, Neo tanks for 11k <laughs> from cities. Uh, over here, I don't think I agree with my transport copter expenditure over here. It was. It was dreaming the dream of like getting these cities very quickly, but my opponent's gonna go for the comm tower. And I was like, I don't really want to deal with my opponent having a comm tower. So I'm gonna actually interrupt my city capture uh, to interrupt this. My opponent instead of going for a transport copter goes for this artillery, which I think is a much better play, honestly, because the artillery can lock down this comm tower very easily and also try in the push for the capture on it. Unfortunately for this artillery, we would really like to stand where this mountain is. <laughs> so it does have a hard time getting into the position it would like to be. Yeah, Hachi was just a fun broken CO to mess around with as a reward for beating the game. That's exactly right. Yeah, and and the Merchant Union only costs five stars. It costs as much. This is the exact same charge setup that Cole has. I mean, I think they must be equal COs. But yeah, until the Super comes online, it's pretty much a regular game. I mean, my units, both of our units cost 10% uh, less, which is nice. We can rush stuff out. But uh, kind of like when you're fighting Sensei, these very forward cities are incredibly powerful. So both players are going to try and stop the other one from getting them. <laughs> so, for instance, I'm going to actually interrupt my own. So I'll just start it up again to... Uh, to interrupt this one and I have my entire here it's it's threatening this airport I'm gearing up to contest we're just contesting each other's comm towers here pretty much I do go for two base skips here in order to get this copter because I really don't want this Bomb tower to fall. And I'm Hachi. I think I'm okay on this front currently. If there's one... Well, Sensei can probably get away with base skips even more than Hachi can. But Hachi can definitely get away with base skips. The unit count will not be a problem very soon. <clears throat> No, oh, I'm so sad that I don't get that kill. That's 
Uh, the transport copter moves here so the anti-air can't reach. Bop, bop. Let's go take out this infantry just to make sure that the captures don't go through. Plus I'm on a missile platform so uh, it'll survive even if tank copter hits it. I'll fall back a little bit so this copter can't get free hits on me. None of these infantry are currently threatening to capture my com or this comm tower, so I'm feeling okay about uh, stepping away a bit. We have our grueling infantry fight as we <laughs> try and get these contested cities. Uh, I get to do that annoying thing where I go for a capture and then the vehicles have to interrupt me. Okay. We're about to see my blunder that doesn't get punished. It's a very silly blunder. For one, I'm going to be really sad here. I don't have a comm tower. I'm like, copter, copter plus infantry. No, it doesn't get, it doesn't get the kill, sad face. And I was like, okay, okay. It's fine. The anti-air, I have it blocked here with this infantry. I can use this two health infantry to stop the anti-air from, from hitting this copter. I'm good. And I'll just continue about my turn, do all the things I want to do. And at the end of the turn, I'm going to just click on this anti-air. And I'll be like, oh, wait a second. It can go one, two, three, four, five, six. It can just kill this copter. And then this copter can come up and hit my other copter. And I'm just become super, super sad. You see, I've already spent my money, so I can't even cover my copter with a copter buy. <laughs> and I messaged the uh, my opponent, whoops. But I think my opponent thought I was saying whoops about them letting me like get so much pressure on this comm tower. Rather than whoops, I made a really bad mistake. Because the anti-air just goes up here and kills this two health infantry. I was like, what? Well, that's really bad for them. Because now I get the comm tower. My copter survives. I mean the this way the anti-air doesn't get hit by the tanks, but it's pretty easy to replace the anti-air here. I got I do get charge. I, I mean I could have gotten charged, yeah. And now I know that my super is gonna be coming soon. And then next turn. So I can be very aggressive um, with some of these attacks. As well, it doesn't look like I have reinforcements on the way. I'm about to have reinforcements on the way. This is also... <laughs> I don't know why I blocked over here with the one health copter. It's not like the anti wants to go in here and hit an infantry. Yeah, this turn I'm just going to build an infantry from every base. And I make sure to move this infantry right here so that my opponent can't just zoom a copter down here and stare at my base, locking it down. Yeah, there's there is a, definitely a psychological aspect. I know I can't count. I can't count the six. It's classic. So my opponent's going to do Merchant Union. They have 22,000 in the bank. Copter, copter, anti-air, tank, artillery, infantry, 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 infantry. Join these for another infantry. That's pretty good. They're negative 590, classic. Um, the artillery buy is a little bit concerning because it is clearly threatening my HQ, but I've banked up to have over 10,000 more than they did in the bank. So my super is going to be really nice. Actually going into debt, yeah.
First of all, you should do some attacks. And also make sure... My opponent didn't build from these bases, so I can actually just kind of take this city. Do... Actually, my opponent can interrupt this, I guess, because, yeah, copter could kill my four health copter and the two health copter could do a damage here. Oh, in my building, yeah. Tank, copter, tank, tank. Yeah, over here, it was just infantry. Suddenly there will be tanks. I'll go for a copter swing over here just so it can't get uh, nice hits. Tank, tank, tank. Tank. Tank, tank, tank. Infantry, infantry. Infantry, infantry. Infantry, infantry, infantry. Go for a swing. Tank rests over here. I didn't quite build off of everything. I think I missed a single city. So I have 48 units here at the start of that turn. I had 31. So I ended that turn up 17 units, which is pretty good, one could say. Like 10 tanks to three. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty good with that. Such is the Hachi way. And then my opponent just resigns as the tanks are going to uh, have to have a little bit of a field day on this next turn. I have to build to save my HQ. You, I don't know if you can build on the HQ. I definitely was not going to try in this game. I think you can only build on cities. Yeah, also make sure you only join uh, before using your super, because your super will make your joins <laughs> give you less money. But GG, fun times, good old Hachi. Nothing quite like having a, a tank sensei off. And then yeah, as I was saying, this is just the first Hachi super, which is always the weakest. The other thing that Hachi can do that other people can't do is you can turn your cities into turrets because you can build pipe runners on them during your super. which can also make a push really strong. Making the pipe runners good. You can also do that with missiles too. Missiles, like their weakest part is that they're really slow. But if you just build a missile on a city that's in range of an airport, suddenly it's amazing. <laughs> GG. A sneaky dragon being too sneaky. Well, I'll I'll just pass on by them till they show up. Okay, we've got a Steeler game. Hand of uh the J Talk win. <laughs> I say that right for once? Versus Steeler. A brush with death. Secret tech. Rachel versus Sammy. High funds Hachi versus high funds Colin. Who we taken? Maybe Sneaky Dragon is trolling. That would be so rude. Okay. This seems like a pretty awful map for Rachel. 
there's, I guess there's some benefit in that her day-to-day -day will be nice. There's lots of repairs you tend to go for on this map. But it's very easy to magnet the uh, infantry and HP missile with this one base up here. In fact, I think that usually happens, which is like a cluster of infantry standing around sucking up missile after missile after missile. And only the... Uh, A double Fred's here. Is this always a double Fred map? Huh. And only the value missile would ever like hit the front lines. That is exactly right, Shoop. That's all you gotta do. Oh, it is foggy. You're right. It's foggy and there's more starting infantry. Well, the foggy, well, the foggy aspect does change this. Pipe runners are unfortunately not usually useful on this map because it's too easy to break off their pipes. Um, and they're really bad in fog. If you don't know, in fog of war, pipes are always revealed. It doesn't show that here in this in this uh, replay viewer. But when you're playing the game, the pipes are always revealed, and the pipe runner and any unit on top of them is also always revealed, which makes them very very sad. Uh, but Sammy is a lot worse. Or is much worse, I'll say, in Fog of War. So. That might help. Although the HQ is still very vulnerable. And these forests are now just so toxic. So we'll see how it goes. I, it looks like Steeler is just going to rush the HQ. I assume Han... Uh, that. J, G, is it J or G? Talk, J, yeah, yeah. Talk win is going to foresee the Sammy rush. Interesting. So Steelers hiding in the woods. It does dodge the mountain infantry, but it does take a. Whoa, what was? Wait a second. <laughs> What was that? Wait, is this just been happening? It is just happening. Oh, are these teleport tiles? Are these teleport tiles and I don't get to see them because the map, the, the replay viewer can't see them? Wait, one second, one second. Just secret tech. Well, okay, I'll let you guys decide. Do you guys want me to view this on the site so we can see the teleport tiles, or should we just continue as is, not knowing what tiles are teleport tiles? <laughs> It'll make it very hard to understand. It'll look the same. Those aren't te teleport tiles. That's just secret tech. Okay, I'll check it out on the site real quick.
All right, if you're saying it looks the same on site, then it looks the same on site, I guess. Okay. I won't. Back to it. Look at how big of a jump that is. I mean, they're, they're both doing the big jumps, I guess. No big jump over here. Beep, beep, beep. Beep, beep, beep. But now there's a big jump. Okay, I don't understand why hand why hand over here couldn't do this big jump. Sealer could. I'd have to know, I guess, what the exploit is. Is diagonal movement. I see. So you can go three diagonally, one, two, three, like that. I mean, this looks like it's it's game over if Steeler just walks over here now. <laughs> That's game over, right? Okay. Should have gone one, two, three like this. So one, two, three. Interesting. Wow, what? Diagonal? That's illegal diagonal. <laughs> the missile moved. Now is hand of is hand actually dead here? One, two, three. I guess there's no. There's only a single attack. You can go one, two, three. One, two, three. Yeah, there's a single attack. So Steeler just wins. That's why you should have black boats on the HQs. Interesting. Okay. Well, that's that's some serious secret tech there. Fog cursed. The site doesn't support diagonal movement anymore. That seems like a good choice. <laughs> Got Ralph War versus No versus Advanced Nude. Yeah, the island base is better. Was that a fog only trick? though you could do it in standard it works better in fog though wow i hope it's fixed there's gonna be some raging if tournaments end like that you're not sure what went wrong okay 
Well, I have the black boat set up here. Two, two in a myriad of ways. Ralph War. I don't know if you're. Are you advanced noob? Um, Ralph War is going for airport. Ooh, advanced noob's not going to go for the airport. He's going to go for some of these contested cities. I respect it. And Ralph War is not going to go for the airport either. He's going to go for a city. Same thing going on on these. We got a boosty. I don't know if that boosty matters, so it could be detrimental potentially to uh, drain extra fuel on this. Poor black boat. Okay, so we're going to go for one of these very contested properties. Uh, something that's obviously a lot better in standard than it is in fog where this can sometimes go horribly, horribly wrong for you. And over here, this infantry can start this capture, which is nice because it also sets itself to, up to interrupt this potential capture. Drop off the airport. Like so. Okay, so here's going to be a choice as to whether or not no vehicles have been built yet. Ralph War could have built a tank this turn, but decided not to, which is pretty sketch. Um, so Advanced Noob has the choice as to whether or not to interrupt here. We'll see what the decision is. There's kind of an argument in both cases. Advanced Noob decides to interrupt and then builds an artillery down here. I don't think I like the artillery down um, on this one base side right now because there's so few units. And since Ralph War didn't build a tank last turn, to me that signals probably saving up to get a copter plus vehicle uh, pretty soon. So the artillery is not going to really like what it's potentially going to be up against. And then over here, I think it's probably a better call to just finish this capture and build a tank and then or an artillery because you, you're going to have more units on this on this front. Usually. Um, and then you just take the city back. You just you just say, who cares? You took my city, but you have no way of holding it long term against me. I just have my tank come over. I've got the infantry back up to finish these captures. They'll take this city from you and there'll be no sweat off my back. Um, as is, this is kind of very even. This city gets interrupted. This city gets interrupted. <laughs> Time to shill map. <laughs> You're Ralph War. Okay, okay. Then for you, Ralph War, this is fine. I would have personally, in that situation where Advanced Noob was capturing the city, I would have just gone for this city to avoid this kind of spot and leverage uh, my pressure down here on these contested properties that Advanced Noob went to went for right away. Kind of like I was talking about how this would go down. Because if you can take properties that your opponent rushes it hits them really really hard they uh because they rush those properties and that's an idea that's going to pay off in the long term they're not going to have an economic advantage over you because while they're capturing these properties you're still capturing properties and the income is going up at the same time if you then take these properties away from them they're the ones that get hit really hard economically because there's still captures going on but they're now behind as they actually lost cities So I wouldn't worry too much about this move. It's going to be a huge investment for Advanced Noob to hold on to these because you're so much closer reinforcement wise. And it's just a perfect thing to start putting pressure on. Which might be why Advanced Noob is going for the double vehicles over here, although I think that's ultimately going to 
result in catastrophe. Yeah, you got, you got the artillery, here, uh, the uh, the copter here in this tank. I think a tank a turn earlier also would have been pretty nice. Is there a join cap? The only join cap could have been up here, right? Yeah. Okay. Um. Interesting. So yeah, the same the same thing going on. I I would much prefer if you just go for these safer captures at this point. The join cap could potentially be disastrous because I think this does still get interrupted if both of these infantry interrupt, and there's gonna be, you'll be torn between two fronts. Then you will like lose two infantry here, but you really want to keep your forces down here to take your opponent's properties. Yeah, that does still get interrupted. It's not the worst thing because, I mean, these cities are still being delayed. But now the pressure is definitely ramping up over here. Oof, the black boat. Oh no, the black boat's not in range. If it was in range, you could try and do some shenanigans where you come up and you repair the infantry. And then you finish the capture. It should be many, many shenanigans for days. Or having the black boat uh, come over here and block this tile while repairing this infantry would also be something that'd be pretty good. Oh, the join cap. Okay. The problem with the join cap is that your opponent has three infantry in range to interrupt this. And it goes down in units. On this front. I would prefer only going for join caps. If it guarantees you get the city. As is, they interrupt here without having to even use the third infantry. They still get their city. Now we get these cities. I think Advanced Dude was doing a good job of, of uh, keeping the pressure on this on this city for long enough so that Ralph War's units here. The infantry are fighting over here. The vehicles are fighting over here. Uh, but since Advanced Noob does have the the forward properties, contested properties already. They would prefer to have vehicles fighting vehicles, infantry fighting infantry, and then nothing nothing changes. Ah no. I don't understand this join. <laughs> Yeah, the unit count is going to start being real rough here. And it's going to make this artillery really happy if the, the unit counts stay very favorable for advanced noob. Because then cheap units like one health infantry can just stop full health tanks from hitting artillery. Yeah, Refor does have a comm tower, which is nice. It should help a little bit with the with the fights. Ooh. Okay, you have the interrupt over here. There's only the copter that can smack here. That's probably okay, because you got your own copter to hit. You are gonna be fighting into a copter chain plus an anti-air that can position itself over here, so it's not perfect. But it is at least something that can go decently well with the nice comp tower lead and uh, your own anti-air. Unfortunately, Advanced Noob is going to be able to get the better positioning first with the backup units. You think this map would be top tier design if there wasn't 5 billion forests around every base? <laughs> A 
any thoughts on all the contested base maps that are coming? I haven't heard about the contested base maps. Unless that was what Walker was talking about with, on the stream with Humida, which I still haven't watched yet. Um, I would say that I personally think contested base is not a good The black boat does make for a very good waller. We have the nice refuel. It's a very important unit to make sure it stays refueled. Both players did so. That's good. That's good. Okay, now these contested properties. At this stage, it's it's starting to it's starting to actually hurt. Up until this point these contested properties didn't really matter who they were owned owned by but now as you enter into the mid game and most of the properties have been captured they it suddenly becomes a really big deal so at this stage uh ralph war is in a in a heap of trouble because the pressure wasn't able to be put on these to have these flipped and both armies can just kind of stare at each other and keep and if that's happening and the status quo just stays the same advanced nukes just going to be up 2k most likely because the city i think is going to get flipped and imagine advanced nukes is going to be able to get this comm tower if not if this comm tower stays uncaptured and the city stays uncaptured then route 4 is going to be pretty decent Been lots of action on the design map discord. Oh. Oh my. I mean, if they can do it, they can do it. I mean, it's, if someone gets a forward base and someone else doesn't, then it's almost like your Hachi light. You break the reinforcement uh, timings and everything. Of course, if there's too many bases, you won't even be able to afford to build from all of them. So that can sometimes happen. You could balance it out. Okay, so it does look like Advanced Noob is just going to try and... Uh, deny these from afar, which makes sense to me. Start capturing these with artillery backup. Put pressure on the comm tower. Seems good. At this point, Ralph War really can't afford to be losing units in order to just keep these neutral. The, the, uh, the play would have to be to try and take these cities and then try and keep the comm tower neutral. We're going to run in, smack the artillery. Hitting the artillery is nice. Okay, so we have a... This is what uh, Voice of Akasha would call an alpha strike. It's where, like, every unit gets a first strike. And they're very nice. It does mean that your whole army gets overextended and you tend to give your opponent a lot of charge if you can alpha strike when they have already used a power then you're usually a lot happier does interrupt this capture hey. i don't know how much charge ralph war had left here but i don't think it was a ton so we got our alpha strike uh the downside to this is that a lot of units uh, do have to be very far forward which makes reinforcing units suddenly become activated <clears throat> so it can be less effective than you would initially think it would be and then the other thing that happens is the opponent gets a ton of charge and for some co's that means they would just hit you with a super like you hit them with a the normal power they hit you with a super for adder it usually means this is going to be three back-to-back -back normal powers <laughs> yeah I know time zones are rough. That's why it's on YouTube. The VODs are very nice. A 
do. We'll just have a normal power. Mac a bunch of forward units. Mass is gonna try and win by unit comp here. It's like I have a bunch of copters and you don't have enough anti-copter tech <laughs> or uh, anti-copter units around to deal with them. So you'll be forced to retreat is the idea. Okay, yeah. Route 4 has no charge left. So this will start getting very dangerous to maintain these attacks because, of course, Route 4 is already fighting overextended and is going to be down uh, quite a bit in charge. If Route 4 was able to get some captures going during that Alpha Strike, that would have been a lot nicer because then you'd be able to to fall back and be in a much happier status quo. I mean, the Alpha Strike was a very good attack for sure. But yeah, the captures happening afterwards, not going to work out quite so well. I do like most of the falling back though, because it's it's like a, it's recognizing that overextension is painful. But yeah, here comes the next normal power. Smackity smack. Everything's getting tested. The copters be getting smacked. Looks like this one might get away without being touched, which is nice. Or Route 4, because it's something that can move down here and help with this fight. I do really like how Advanced Noob is still utilizing some injured units. Because sometimes a two health artillery is just all you need to do that little bit extra damage. Even with that attack now, uh, with advanced noob like pushing back, uh, this is now more of a. It's probably not exactly even. I have to count out all the, the tiles and all that fun stuff, but it's now looking to be more of a fighting distance, equal fighting distance for both players. power use this turn which kind of surprises me uh maybe the plus 10 plus 10 stats and extra movement just wasn't very useful oh well, advanced noob does seem to have messed up a tiny bit here usually what you want to do on that that second turn is you go for a bunch of attacks that don't really need the power to get charge so that you can do a third turn of having a power There's probably a slight mess up there for Advanced Noob, and Route 4 is going to be, unfortunately, really overcharged here. It'll be interesting to see. So if, if, if Advanced Noob doesn't overextend, which I would imagine is going to be the play, is like, I'll just go after these properties, continue trying to deny these properties, and uh, every turn that nothing's happening, Advanced Noob gets further and further ahead because of the income lead. We have a normal power used here. Paint first strike, smacking around for innocent infantry. Capture. I guess that's okay. Run out of steam a bit over here. Okay, Ruffor does have a nice unit count lead here. One capture going on as a threat. Ideally, you want to have as many going on as threats during brawls at this as you can, because you want the vehicles being forced to hit infantry rather than your own vehicles. Uh, it's, it's definitely very important to go for captures on your opposing cities here. 
one. I think this is a very good idea. We joined the tanks together there. I'm surprised. I don't quite see why these got joined. I guess Advanced Noob just didn't want this 3 health artillery firing along with this 5 health tank to kill here. Okay, we have the side slip. Mech comes in. Nice. Nice capture threat over here. This copter is also really good. Uh, oh, Wanda. Exchange there. Uh, having this tank come in. A little bit gutsy for sure. There isn't a lot of good backup for this guy. Although it, oh, it does kind of, I was going to say it doesn't really activate this tank, but it, it does. So, what do I, why it's not great is this is a full health tank. So it comes down here, it's going to kill off the seven health tank, but that's ultimately going to result in losing a full health tank for a seven health tank. Because it was pretty easy to make sure that this backwards tank here didn't have a, uh, didn't have a target. But now it's suddenly going to get a target once advanced new pieces and normal power. Same with like these infantry diving in, it's just it's just activating the re reinforcements. Ooh, nice repair on the artillery. So yeah, all those get units getting picked off by units that otherwise it wouldn't have a target. Well, very fortunate for Ralph War that this one health this tank survived at one health. That doesn't mean this anti-air can't come over here and interrupt this capture, which I assume was its goal. Two, three, four, five, six. Oh no, it still could have. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I guess they just didn't want to do it. They wanted to go after the copter instead. Wow. I would have thought it would have, uh, would have done that. Maybe. I guess because a RAV4 has the power active, it's not going to be guaranteed to kill. You call activating reinforcements as expanding the combat with want to sack it i would i would if, if it stops it i would do it because that's a 2k income swing and there's all other anti -air around oh Another one dies. This is a, I guess this is okay ish. Uh, this is another case of like you activate the, uh, the reinforcements. It's like I go in and hit a tank. In this case, it's, I hit a tank and an anti air. So this tank already had an option of something to hit. So it's kind of overly okay. Ruff War has a nice unit count lead for now. Yeah, you your alpha strike was really, really good. The overextensions are very painful. Pop. Pop. Oof. Very annoying capture going on over here. 
by Ralph War because this tank, well, unless Advanced Noob uses a power, this tank is only going to be able to interrupt or the anti air. Uh, so there's this forcing a vehicle to go hit a five health infantry. When there's other fighting going on. Oof, three damage. Brawl is pulling force down. Smack D. If this infantry could have somehow stopped this from getting hit at all, that would have been even better. You can only hope for so much in life. Okay. So I really like how Advanced Noob is not diving too far forward. Like, there's a little bit going on over here, but it is on a city. The one next to the city is probably a little sketch. But it is helping the guard and anti-air, so I can understand that. And it is actually out of range of this tank, too. So. Oof, not getting the kill, no. Okay, the side slip here. I think it's in order to kill this tank off with the mech. Interrupt there, go after a copter. I kind of like the dive in to kill the copter. Because it makes this copter's uh, attack a lot, a lot better. I mean, the anti is going to die for it, which isn't great, but at least the copter gets to stand here on the plane. Yeah, I really like how Advanced Warrior is, or not Advanced Warrior, Advanced Noob is, uh, like, has the choice of going after units up here to attack, or units that have overextended, go after the units that have overextended, because it invites your opponent to overextend even more, and helps you build up more and more units. Yo, yo, yo. Starts building up a little death ball. A little gutsy to go for this little copter swing. There's no anti air in range to just be a copter while you have your own anti air, is probably fine. It does build more charge. Who has a charge lead? So now both players are going to try and, I imagine, set up for another alpha strike. Uh, Antire goes in to kill that copter. Is the only Antire on this with this army. There's not too many copters for Advanced Noob currently, so it's probably okay. I do like, like I was saying before, these are these are the cities I I would really like Round Four to be putting the pressure on. So I do like that. Preferably, there would be an artillery guarding this, so that there'd be no way to have any sort of a profit profitable attack from Advanced Noob. Very patient by advanced dude. No pulling the trigger on the power. That's one of the advantages that Adder has over Cole is when you have your <clears throat> normal power with the two bars and then your super with the three bars, you have a larger power bank to build up. Okay. I think I would prefer if advanced dude was putting more pressure on these cities, kind of like I was saying for Ralph War, but if you can get away with it, then definitely you'd like to steal your opponent's city for sure. And Advanced Noob does have the artillery here, which helps a lot. So we have a wall set up here, and right now it's a very nice wall because having an ocean tile that your opponent can't strike from makes the end is like a like a perfect end to your wall. And until a copter comes over and can attack from it, of course. Walls are pretty much only as strong as 
the uh, the ends of them are. So just something to, to keep in mind. Unless it can be like a one shot, some one shot deals. A good anchor point. Yeah, there you go. The best anchor point that you can ever have is the edge of the map. No one can attack past there. Ooh, rough, we're being very calm here. Trying to set up for another one of those really big alpha strikes while not being too strikable in return. Advanced Noob actually letting a lot of charge uh, potentially go to waste here. We're going to go for another Alpha Strike, but we got pretty decent walls set up here for Vance Noob, so... Probably not going to be too scary, yeah. Well, the capture even goes through. Yeah, I think the walling by Advanced Noob was probably just strong enough there. And now, Rough Wars has got a whole bunch of really exposed units. I would expect this to probably end in one to two turns now. That was just like a, a big ol' attack. Uh, so, something you'll probably notice here is... Ralph War with this like lunge forward, it was only vehicles that really got to do it any have any action. But now that Ralph War is up in advanced news face, all of these infantry will also get to participate. And they'll get to do two things. I don't know if we'll see how much the second thing, but they'll get to of course uh, attack units, but they'll also get to just stand in the way. Like over here. And, and protect um, advanced noobs units while well, Ralph War isn't quite able to get that same use out of them on that first turn. But we do break through and let the anti air hit this copter. The nice sacrificial attack. The mechs be marching. more sacrificial attacks okay it goes down plenty of anti airs over here for advanced noob that seems like a pretty good attack by ralph war i mean the uh the units down here are kind of up against are kind of like separated from the main fight which could end up being very bad for them but they're doing important things like stopping captures of comp towers. We do have that breakthrough over here. Sad days for Route 4. The copter goes down. It's going to be the only copter in this area for a long time. Yeah. Advanced Noob's like, okay, you've got five vehicles over here. I'm just going to attack the other side with the majority of my units and have infantry you and your vehicles be fighting on this side, which is pretty rough. We do have a side slip. Side slips can help with the front switching. You get to smack the artillery, which is nice. And then Ralph Ford just resigns. I mean, the fighting was still ongoing, but I'm going to be ending the turn down in income, and these tanks are going to be pretty easy to, to smack around. The Antair is not going to be able to catch up to help defend you for quite a while. I think it's a, a reasonable resign. GG. Big old brawl. The uh, early contested property captures paid off a lot for advanced noob there. Uh, Ralph War al almost got a comeback there with that big old alpha strike. If there was captures going on at the same time as that, I think that probably would have decided the game.
Fluffy, me like the strategy of just attacking the other side. I like that strategy too. <laughs> Missile powers theoretically can. <laughs> they can't hit off. Oh, you mean... Well, they can't attack from off the map. They can't target out there. GG. That'll be our last replay for the day. We never even got to see the uh, the sneaky dragon game. I'll have to try and catch them next time. I leave you all with an apple. And I'm going to be back tomorrow because I will be playing uh, Ocarina of Time Randomizer. We'll see how that goes. We'll see how that goes. It should be fun, though. A blast from the past. Thanks for watching, everybody. It's Go7, king of the penguins. Of all the penguins, he is king. It's Go7, king of the penguins. Being king of the penguins, that's his name.